Welcome everybody to this uh, side event of the European Commission's Research and Innovation Days dedicated to the subject of regions and cities and the role that regions and cities can play in the new European research area and in our new research and innovation funding program Horizon Europe. My name is Patrick Child. Uh, I am Deputy Director General of DG Research and Innovation in the European Commission. It's my pleasure to be your moderator today. Um, and we are delighted to be organizing this session also in close cooperation with the European Committee of the Regions in the framework of our newly relaunched program of activities under the Knowledge Exchange platform, which gives us a real focus for the way that uh, research and innovation coming from regions, from cities, can feed into our work at a regional level. And so I'm going to kick off our session today uh, with a video message uh, from our Commissioner, Maria Gabriel, responsible for research, innovation, education, youth and culture. So, Commissioner, please. Dear President Tsitsikostas, dear Apostolos, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to be here today with you to open the first event of the relaunched Knowledge Exchange Platform. Since already 2015, the Knowledge Exchange Platform provides twice a year an occasion of open exchange between the Commission and the Committee of the Regions members on jointly selected topics. In November 2020, we relaunched the Knowledge Exchange Platform as part of our joint action plan which is encompassing 26 joint activities with the Committee of the Regions in the areas of research, innovation, education, culture, youth and sports. The actions aim, aims at increasing the territorial innovation cohesion and building a well interconnected pan-European innovation ecosystem. The Joint Action Plan is a fundamental element in maximizing the positive impact of our actions on the whole European territory with concrete outcomes in the first six months since the launch of the action plan, particularly in the areas of the preparation of the new Pact for Research and Innovation in close collaboration with the ERA Forum for Transition and ERA stakeholders, the definition of the governance mechanism of the missions to ensure engagement of policymakers, national and regional program managers and mission board member. This year's first knowledge exchange platform event focuses on the role of regions and cities in the European research area and on the opportunities for regions arising from Horizon Europe. Both cities and regions are an essential part of a place-based approach to research and innovation that is at the core of the New Horizon Europe European Innovation Ecosystems Programme. There is indeed a need to reinforce the existing regional and local ecosystems, to create new ones and to make sure that all of them are well interconnected. This entails close cooperation at European, national, regional and local level and our cooperation with the Committee of the Regions is essential in this direction. We believe in an integrated approach with the reinforcement of all the elements and actors of the ecosystems, from startups to innovators, to investors to universities, so that they can successfully foster place-based development and innovation, and more easily be linked to each other and exchange best practices. We are therefore working with stakeholders on the European strategy for universities to reinforce and make future-proof the higher education sector in Europe, based on their needs and on the challenges they face, and seeing their missions of education, research, innovation and service to society in a holistic way. We believe that universities should be at the centre of this pan-European innovation ecosystem. The ERA Hubs initiative, currently under development, will be at the same time benefiting from and consolidating all these initiatives as it will strengthen innovation ecosystem actors involved in knowledge production, circulation and use, stimulate excellence and function as an incentive for less developed ecosystems. We are currently in the process of mapping innovation ecosystems across the European research area 
and the findings will feed into the development of ERA Hub's concept, which will build on other existing structures and networks, such as the digital innovation hubs. It will be rolled out across Europe in order to advance in the construction of a truly pan-European innovation ecosystem, where the complex interplay within the European multi-level and multi-actor ecosystems for knowledge production, circulation and use does not constitute an obstacle, but rather an asset. I look forward to continuing the close cooperation between the Commission and the Committee of the Regions on the many challenges we are facing. Joining our efforts is essential to design common solutions to improve citizens' lives. I wish you a fruitful exchange of views and a lively discussion. Thank you very much, Commissioner, uh, for those inspiring words. And now we're able, I hope, to go straight over to uh, a, a speech from uh, uh, Apostolos Tsitsi Kostas, who is joining us, I think, live from the uh, Joint Research Centre in Seville, uh, and who is, as we know, President of the Committee of the Regions and who is working together with us on the relaunch of the Knowledge uh, Exchange Platform. So, Mr. President, the floor is yours, please. Dear Director General Child, ladies and gentlemen, um, I salute you from uh, Sevilla, the headquarters of JRC, where I have the opportunity to, to see and uh, visit the premises here. It is true that uh, they are doing an incredible work, and uh, we are very lucky to have them, uh, especially when it comes. Uh, to uh, great issues that we have ahead of us coming out of the pandemic and recovering as a European Union. So it is my great pleasure to take part in this uh, side event of the European Research and Innovation Days. Research and innovation activities bring growth and jobs to our regions. We know that uh, very well by now and help find solutions to pressing changes of the society. The co-funding from EU programs such as Horizon has given a boost, for example, to the fight against COVID-19, the development of vaccines and the research into the new variants. Um, so first I would like to say a word on the knowledge exchange platform and on its relevance in the rollout of the renewed research area. It is an important tool to improve access to excellence and a central initiative in our joint action plan. The relaunched CAP 2.0 has an ambitious work plan centered around the objectives of the ERA. It will help us showcase its value added and widen outreach. And it will provide regional and local actors with opportunities to promote their R&I activities and, of course, uh, exchange good practice. The Knowledge Exchange Platform will continue to be an excellent means to highlight the local impact of r and projects funded under the Horizon program. So, dear colleagues, the new era is a milestone in efforts to build a common research area for researchers and innovators in our regions, linking RNA our industrial ecosystems, and the European education area. It is time now to move fast from era design and promotion to its implementation, including, of course, always the local and regional level. Because to become a success, the renewed era needs the participation of regional and local governments who work every day on the ground to successfully carry out European, national and regional R&I projects all across Europe. Citizen regions, you know that very well, and their innovation ecosystems are essential for the success of the era. We need to focus more on these territorial ecosystems and enable them to become better interconnected, better financed and, of course, more resilient. Because these ecosystems are grown bottom up and over time. In joint effort from all stakeholders, public authorities, researchers, innovators, businesses, universities, and of course the society. So 
So such ecosystems need considerable resources. Therefore, synergies of national, regional, EU funds are instrumental and the targeted support from both the EU and national funds with the active participation of universities and SMEs is vital. The European Committee of the Regions warmly supports the ERA hubs. The network of ERA hubs could become an excellent framework to boost collective research and innovation projects, combining several regional ecosystems and innovation hubs, always, and I repeat that, in a bottom-up approach. This, of course, would also mean a recognition of a place-based approach to science and innovation and to the, of the territorial roots of scientific knowledge and excellence. So I really want to clearly state that we stand ready to participate in the preparation of the next steps of the ERA implementation, such as the adoption of the Pact for Research and Innovation in Europe, and the further development of a network of ERI ERA hubs. So, dear Director General, dear ladies and gentlemen, our cities and regions are the basis for innovation and for transfer of research results to the market. And we encourage close collaboration between industry and academic institutions. This is what I do in my region, Central Macedonia, in Greece bringing closely, closer, the industry with the academic institutions and the work places. And in my interactions all this time with the EU institutions, the Greek government, I keep stressing a few specific priorities. First, to use the regional innovation capacity and diversity of experiences to the benefit of all Europeans, especially the ones who are left behind. Second, to be concrete and useful, not only to regional universities and research centers, but also to businesses and local communities. And third, to simplify, when possible, and pool resources, combining national, regional, and European funds. So I believe that these principles are still applicable. However, however, we never stop facing challenges, such as the disparities between regions. And that is why we must urgently tackle the innovation divide, my dear friends, and face the fact that more than half of EU's R&D expenditure took place in only 22 out of 208 not as to regions. I, I think I lost the connection. Can you hear me? I cannot see you. No, we can hear you well. Go ahead. We hear you. Hello? Hello? we we'll spend a second trying to reconnect. President Isigoptus, you, you hear us now? I have, I have lost you. Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you very well, yes, thank you. We hear you very well, huh? There is a... No. Okay, well, we will uh, unfortunately move on, but thank you very much, uh, President, for your um, very thoughtful intervention. I think you've set the scene uh, extremely clearly, uh, and uh, the message that comes through about the commitment and the opportunities of working with regions and cities across the Euro European Union as we seek to address the uh, innovation divide, I think, comes out uh, uh, very clearly from your remarks. So we now move on to uh, our panel discussion, um, and I'm really delighted that we've got here with us today um, four extremely uh, competent speakers and I'm sure uh, inspiring uh, thinkers around this whole challenge of how we bring our local actors, regions, um, cities and others into our work on developing the European uh, research area for the benefit of our, our citizens and for our e economies. And so I will introduce now the panel. We have first here with me in the studio uh, Manuel Alessio, who is uh, head of unit uh, for the um, European Research Area Governance and Implementation here in DG Research and Innovation. You're very welcome, Manuel. 
Um, we then have uh, Fernando Hervas, uh, Deputy Head of Unit for Territorial Development uh, in the Joint Research Centre. Um, so delighted to have you with us as well uh, to give your perspective. Then we have Sarah English, who is uh, Chair of ERIN, which everyone will know is the European Regions Research and Innovation Network, uh, representing, I think, 125 regions and, and in 22 countries uh, across the European Union and beyond. Uh, so you're also very welcome. Uh, and finally, um, we have Christophe Clergeau, uh, member of the Committee of the Regions, um, and, and also... Um, who is, I think, in the uh, Conseil Régional in the Pays de Loire in Fran France. Uh, so you're, you're very welcome to be with us. Um, uh, Mr. President Sissikostas, uh, I see you are back with us. Are you able to hear us now? And uh, maybe you could... Uh, Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you very well. If you have a few more concluding remarks, we'd be happy to have your, your final yes. messages. Sorry for that. There was a technical issue. Sure. Uh, I, I was saying before we got interrupted that we must urgently tackle the innovation divide. We need to face the fact, my dear friends, that more than half of the EU's R&D expenditure took place in only 22 out of the 208 NATS2 regions. So we have to stop any decrease in R&D intensity. And we must join efforts to close the persisting innovation gaps by spreading excellence and by widening participation so that no region and no innovation ecosystem is left behind. As I mentioned earlier, we need to help our innovation ecosystems become more resilient. And that means that local and regional authorities must be more involved in the design and of course in the implementation of research and innovation initiatives. And at the same time, be more involved in the strategic identification of regional research priorities. So we could also capitalize on the diversity of regional and local RNI systems fostering inclusiveness, improving the circulation of knowledge and focusing on the renewed smart specialization strategies. This is after all why I'm here today in Sevilla, in the JRC, to see how we can use these smart specialization strategies in the benefit not only of the regions, not only of the people and their economies, but also in how to lessen this gap between regions. We should also look for specific additional instruments at the European, national, regional and local levels to tackle brain drain and turn it into brain gain. Third, research infrastructures and open science initiatives are important to tackle the fragmentation of the European research area. So, finally, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to refer to the EU funding synergies and the need to better promote them. Some of these challenges could be partly addressed via the versatile instruments and sizable budget provided in the Horizon Europe. And we are very pleased that the Commission adopted last week the main work program of Horizon Europe for the period 21-22 and its topic areas that will receive up to 14.7 billion in funding. These investments will help towards a sustainable post-pandemic recovery and will accelerate the green and digital transitions in our regions. So it is a priority for us that the local and regional authorities are able to participate in the strategic planning, in the guiding the implementation of the Horizon program. We must ensure a fruitful exchange between European research and innovation policy and the regional and local actors implementing it on the ground. It is also the view of our members that it is essential to involve regions and cities in the governance of the New Horizon missions and the European Innovation Partnerships. So we can definitely play a strategic role by supporting the co-creation process and raise awareness on all five mission areas. Dear Director General, dear friends, research and innovation are vital for succeeding in the Green Deal and the digital transformations. These are even more relevant as components of the urgently needed post-pandemic socioeconomic recovery plans. So I wish to conclude today by stressing our committee's openness for regular policy dialogues to support impact-driven investments and reforms on the ground. <clears throat> Let us work together to improve research and innovation coordination in the era and the horizon Europe between all levels of government it is in our hands to reduce the R&I divide.
and to maximize at the same time the impact of our joint investments in order to achieve a successful green and digital transition in our regions. I'm positive we can do it if we work together. So thank you very much for your attention and I wish you fruitful discussions and an excellent conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. President, and we wish you, we wish you uh, a great day in Seville, uh, and uh, thank you very much for your very comprehensive overview um, of the very many uh, exciting ways that our regions and cities will be able to contribute to our work on developing and strengthening the European uh, research area. Uh, and I think that one of the messages that, that you, you highlighted and which comes, I think, very strongly from the uh, communication that the Commission adopted in September of last year on the strengthened European research area is on the vital contribution that bottom-up uh, research and innovation initiatives can bring uh, to our, our common goals. And I think that that's something that we will have an opportunity to get into more uh, as we discuss uh, with, the, with the panel. Uh, because bottom-up initiatives are the way that we can engage citizens, but also find test beds for local experimental uh, approaches to research and innovation, uh, finding solutions. As, we, as you have rightly said, Mr. President, join forces in our response to the uh, green and digital uh, post-COVID recovery strategies that we so desperately need. You also highlighted, and you're completely right, the need for us to work harder together to exploit synergies between our different EU funding programmes and between EU funding programmes and national funding programmes. Um, and here I think that uh, the recent adoption of the first work programmes for Horizon Europe, uh, the ongoing preparations for the next generation of the EU structural funds, the opportunities that Euro European investment bank lending and our new range of uh, financial instruments under InvestEU all provide really exciting opportunities that we need to work together on. One particular issue in our communication, which you also mentioned, was the, the new proposal to develop ERA hubs. This idea that we provide a focus in local regions and areas uh, to bring together actors around our research and innovation agendas uh, to help us develop skills, to promote research and innovation, to promote inter-regional cooperation and, and exploit ideas uh, for funding. So I'm very hopeful that with the new strengthened uh, European research area, we will be able to build on our past successes. What the Commission referred to, developing and exploiting place-based solutions uh, to bring together local actors, universities and research organisations, innovators, um, as well as uh, citizens and, and public authorities, all coming together behind uh, what I hope will be a common ambition uh, to develop research and innovation strategies to the benefit of our societies, to the benefit of our citizens uh, and in support of our economic progress. And I think that's enough from me in terms of um, uh, setting the scene. So I'd now like to move on to our very distinguished uh, uh, panel. And I'd like to start um, with, uh, I hope, a not too provocative question for uh, Manuel, um, which is, you know, what in practical, concrete terms can our regions and cities do to engage um, in the governance of the European research area and therefore contribute to its implementation? Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, one of the uh, uh, important points that uh, came out in uh, Commissioner Gabriel and the President Titi Costas' interventions was the notion of having an integrated approach. And I think this is something which is really new today and something that we are really working on. For the first time, we can take the Commission communication of September last year, the Council conclusions of December, and indeed the Joint Action Plan, and we can read them together. And for me, this is something new and very important. Now, to, 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 to reply to your question directly, what specifically can we do in terms of the era governance? I think there are three things that we can do. One is to work on the policy, uh, the era policy agenda. Now, this is a joint agenda of actions to be agreed between the Commission and the Member States and to be carried out together over a number of years. Now, these discussions are ongoing right now, and it's very important that in the design of these actions, the regional and local dimension is duly taken into account. So it's a, a substantive concern that in the policy agenda, there is a due consideration of the regional and local dimension. So that's one particular aspect where I think we have to work on. Uh, 
the second uh, issue is about the governance. That is, who does what? Now, these discussions are on ongoing in the ERA Forum, and I see here Christophe, who, who is a, a member of the forum and a very active one, uh, and who participates indeed in the discussions. And the discussions on governance in the forum have only just begun. We are asking questions such as, what should the forum do in the future? How should it interact with ERAC? What should be the role of ERAC? And so on and so forth. Now, these questions are extremely delicate and important, and I think we need to get them right, and we need to get right the regional and local dimension in these discussions and in the era governance. Just as we need to get right the intervention of stakeholders, for example. And I see here Sarah from Erin. Erin is uh, participating also very actively in these discussions. And it is really important that the governance does take into account uh, the uh, intervention of stakeholders too. Um, finally, I think we need to look at a third aspect, which is the Pact for Research and Innovation. Now, the Commissioner mentioned this in her intervention. We are working internally in presenting a proposal over the next couple of weeks on the Pact. It's to be a Council recommendation. And the Pact will have a very important chapter, which is about policy coordination which is about the whole policy cycle, design, implementation, and monitoring. And here, too, I think we need to make sure that we get right the intervention and the role of regions and cities. And this means not only thinking about the national and the European level, but also thinking about the regional and local level and how we roll these, uh, uh, these different levels into a coherent policy coordination mechanism and cycle indeed. So these are three specific areas, policy coordination within the pact, era governance within the structure of the future governance of the European research area, and specific actions within the policy agenda that I think we need to get right in order to make sure that regions and cities do have a role in the new European research area. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Manuel. A lot to think about there, and I'm sure we'll get an opportunity in our discussion a bit later on to come back to the more practical ways that people who are sitting in the regions, in the cities, can actually respond to the call that you've just uh, uh, sent out for their, their engagement. But uh, it gives a very clear view of the way ahead. So I'd now like to move on to our next uh, panelist, which is uh, Fernando uh, from the Joint Research Centre. And my question for you, Fernando, is, I think, uh, can you talk us through what you see as the importance of local innovation ecosystems and their relevance at a European level. And I know you have some slides to share with us, so I guess you've had advance warning of my question. Indeed. Thank you very much, uh, Patrick. And thank you very much uh, to the organizers of this meeting for inviting the, the Joint Research Centre. As the Commissioner has explained, uh, we, we are part of this, of this uh, knowledge exchange platform uh, 2.0 and, and, and as a broader action plan uh, to, to, to a strengthen collaboration between the Committee of Regions and the, the European Commission. And uh, well, we are the knowledge and, and science service of the, of the European Commission. So our main role here is to, to provide evidence and to try to directly support uh, the, the, the regions and the local actors to, to connect to the to the broad priorities of the of the European Commission so uh, as it has been said by by, by Manuel um, I think governance is, is is very important but I think it is very important that we put uh, the era governance into the broader landscape of the of the multi-level innovation landscape which is which is quite uh, complex and uh, the challenge here for for us is to try to to connect uh, the bottom up uh, processes of of uh, regions and cities uh, that they, they, they are putting into place uh, through their smart specialization strategies mainly how they are able to connect to, to, to broad uh, European uh, very ambitious uh, projects of, of of going to through uh, towards um, a carbon-free and digital economy. So we have the European Green Deal, the EU's digital agenda, with a lot of uh, very concrete initiatives that support uh, both uh, transition ambitions. And of course, uh, into this context, we have uh, both uh, the European research uh, area, uh, new uh, communication of last year, and also the EU industrial uh, strategy. 
that sets up uh, these 14 uh, European, what they call industrial ecosystems. And, and we think these are uh, very powerful uh, <coughs> instruments uh, that could allow regions to, to, to connect and, and, to, uh, and to link uh, their, their regional and innovation activities to, the, to these broad uh, objectives. And of course, in the middle, uh, we have the role of member states, which of course is very important. Uh, member states uh, have to link uh, with regions, have to also help uh, regions and cities to connect to the EU level. And uh, we have now um, apart from, from the, the, the new multi-annual uh, framework uh, instruments uh, and cohesion policy, uh, we have this uh, new recover, um, recovery and, and resilience plans that uh, the, the, the member states are putting now on the table in order to receive the, the next uh, generation funding. And we believe there is also an opportunity and a need to connect uh, these, uh, the, the reforms and the investments identified in these broad uh, national plans with, with what is being done at, at the local level. Uh, next slide, please. So this is just an illustration of, of how complicated uh, the governance can be. The, this is both uh, a, uh, a way to illustrate the complexity, but also it's, it's a good example. Uh, I have taken the batteries uh, innovation or the, the batteries industry value chain also, which uh, is one of the main priorities uh, in view of uh, in the context of the Green Deal and in, in view of the electrification of, of transport and also of, of industry. Um, and, uh, and we can see here that uh, we have a, a very broad uh, palette of, of instruments uh, starting while well, some or most uh, many supported by Horizon, 2020 now would be uh, supported by Horizon on Europe. So we have these uh, joint undertakings, uh, the technological platforms. We have new Horizon Europe uh, partnerships. Uh, we have actions uh, supported by the EIT in the area. But we have also the important projects of common European interest uh, and many other actions, of course, at member state and even local level or regional level. We have uh, an interregional partnership in the context of uh, smart specialization and industrial modernization. So making sense or, or, or aligning all these instruments uh, towards uh, the main objectives, uh, we requires a strong political leadership. And I think the, the, the example of the Battery Alliance, uh, which is coordinated by uh, Vice President uh, Sefcovic of the European Commission, and is supported by a very concrete action plan, uh, it, it's, it's a, is a good way, we believe, to, to, to go uh, forward and, and, and could be taken as an example for, for other uh, innovation and industrial uh, ecosystems. And I think this idea of, of trying to strengthen the synergies between the different funding that uh, both uh, the Commissioner, the uh, President of the Committee of Regions, Chichi Costas, and you yourself, uh, Patrick, uh, have, have said are, are, are extremely important. And, and we are helping regions uh, to, to connect and to, and to exploit these synergies. Uh, next slides. So here uh, I, we are sitting, uh, we are uh, the Joint Research Center, uh, the part that is sitting in, in Seville. Uh, so we are, as you know now, uh, we have received the president of the, of the Committee of Regions. Uh, we have here the, the Smart Specialization Platform, which uh, has the main aim uh, in, collabor in close collaboration with uh, DG Regio. Uh, to support regions to, to implement uh, this governance concept uh, that uh, was already part of the, of the previous cohesion funding uh, programming. Uh, and now it is renewed uh, for in, in view of the next uh, seven years. So the good governance of smart specialization is one of uh, what is called enabling condition. So uh, the, the, the member states and the regions have to put in place uh, proper governance to allow uh, the implementation of this governance model that we believe uh, can, uh, can, is a participatory model. So it's, uh, it helps uh, the co making the, the, the connection between the main actors of the innovation ecosystems uh, at, the, at the local level. So both uh, from the public sector, the governments, but also including uh, universities, uh, very important, of course, the business sector and uh, the citizens. And, and we believe it's a good instrument to support uh, the just transition and, and, and to uh, identify new opportunities for, for creating quality jobs and, and for promoting uh, local economic growth, which is again connected 
uh, to the achievement of, of the broad objectives of, of, of going to a, through a carbon-free and, and, and digital economy. Uh, next slide, please. So what we have seen uh, based on the previous experience uh, over the last uh, seven years of implementation of mass specialization is that indeed uh, we have uh, achieved uh, quite a good degree of integration or, or interaction uh, between the different stakeholders in terms of participating in both the programming and the implementation, the identification of investments, and then the implementation of the investments uh, under the smart specialization strategies, but we still see that uh, some of the actors and in particular the civil society or some education institutions particularly the ones on vocational education uh, are still uh, not so much involved and, and and this will be a challenge for for the next uh, period and, and 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 we hope that uh, that we will be able to to promote this this participation next slide please um, also, from from the platform and in the context of, of smart specialization, uh, we are contributing or supporting uh, this articulation of the different ecosystems. This has also been mentioned by by our commissioner, and also in the context of the initiative of innovation hub or uh, knowledge hubs, era hubs. Sorry. Uh, it is important to not just to reinforce and identify the local um, innovation ecosystems and, and era hubs, but also to connect them. And the smart specialization uh, in the previous period has established this interregional collaboration between regions that uh, had uh, common interest along uh, uh, main uh, thematic areas. And uh, there are many topics of, the, of these uh, interregional partnerships that are at the core of the systems that, that, that uh, are key for making the, the twin transition uh, a, a reality. We are speaking about the uh, housing system, energy, manufacturing, agri-food, mobility, natural environment and digital, and many of the actions uh, are, are, are supported by, by these partnerships. And, and we hope that the next, in the next period, this will be a good basis also in order to map and to of both uh, the ecosystems and the actors in the context of the, of the ERA Hub uh, initiative. Uh, next slide. Uh, next slide. I will through this one. Uh, one example that has been mentioned also, uh, the ERA Hubs initiative, um, it would be useful to take advantage of, of experiences. Also from the um, smart specialization platform, we are supporting the, the setting up of these digital innovation hubs in collaboration with, with DigiConnect of the European Commission. And uh, this is a good example of, of how to bring together the, the different participants uh, involved in, in, in in promoting the digital transition of, of, of the territories, uh, research and technology organizations, universities, and, and they are in collaboration with industry association, clusters, etc. And uh, this, uh, this, as I said, is a good example. Next, next slide. So here, uh, again, in the platform, we are helping uh, DigiConnect to, to map the, the hubs, to, to set criteria in order to identify which ones can be, uh, could be considered uh, as part of, of this uh, European network of, of hubs. And we have now uh, 1,000, more than 1,000 validated digital innovation hubs uh, across Europe. Next slide. So what is next now? So what is what are we discussing now? Also now, uh, with the visit of, of the Committee of Regions, uh, we are trying to 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 to, to put uh, in practice uh, what we call well a voluntary upgrading of, of the smart specialization strategies of the regions. Also again in the context of cohesion policy, but the idea is to to bring in the more strongly the sustainability part. So we speak about uh, S3 smart specialization strategies and to S4 adding the, the, the fourth S of sustainability. And uh, what we are, will, will try to do is to reinforce the, the transformative nature of, of innovation. And for this we are collaborating also with our colleagues in, in DGRTD uh, that they have a strong or, or a new initiative on, on promoting transformative innovation policy and we believe this is the, the way forward. Also to reinforce uh, the horizontal not, not, not just the vertical uh, multi-governance uh, 
coordination, but also the horizontal between innovation and other policies, industrial policy, transport, I mean, all the policies that are related to, to, the, to the twin transitions. And uh, our aim is to, to collaborate with the Committee of Regions to launch uh, 15, 20 pilots in order for regions to test uh, this, this new approach where we are developing a, a new methodology. I think with this I, I will finish and uh, will be happy to, to continue with the discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much indeed, uh, Fernando, for your very careful presentation of the immense complexity of the existing uh, landscape for research and uh, innovation ecosystems and how they fit with other moving parts of our policy, in particular the smart uh, specialization strategies and, and other aspects. And I mean, I for one am glad that I am not uh, responsible for a regional administration or regional government and having to make sense of all of that. But, um, I'm also very happy that we've got um, uh, Sarah with us, who, from the perspective of her uh, network of uh, research and innovation actors across the regions uh, of the European Union, is going to give us, I think, uh, uh, an insight uh, not only into the broader topic, uh, but also a, a specific example of the case study of how um, the Orkney Islands have uh, successfully been able to um, develop regional in innovation initiatives, taking advantage, I hope, of many of the moving parts that uh, Fernando has so eloquently presented to us. So, Sarah, over to you, please. Thanks very much. Um, a great introduction there. Nothing like being told it's something very complicated that you're going to try and make simple. Um, I think, though, what I'd like to do um, today <coughs> is talk a little bit on behalf of the Erin Network, as you mentioned, um, as chair, but also share happily for me some experiences from uh, Scotland as well on a little bit of how we're taking some of what seems like a really complex environment and but explaining how actually looking at it from the bottom up as many of the speakers have mentioned can simplify it a little um, but I'll come back to that so on a general level we've got a couple of slides just to guide things also because I'm losing my voice a little so <clears throat> this is to help everybody as well if you can't hear me well so obviously um, the Erin Network, we're um, really, I think, excited at how much this uh, kind of regional dimension, the place-based approach to innovation has been now um, embraced by all our institutional partners at the European level as well. Um, so that we're very positive. I think there's really fertile ground for even more discussions on how we can use this kind of approach to help add value both at the local level and within the regions, because, I mean, that's very important for us as economic development practitioners, but also through connecting up that knowledge, experience and the kind of local assets to help broaden and deepen um, the R&I uh, work across the EU and at the European level, um, going right back to the Commissioner and the, uh, the President of the COR's speeches as well. I mean, what we note as a network of people supporting R&I within the regions is there's a high level of focus on kind of programmes and instruments We've mentioned, you know, we've got the ecosystem approach, digital innovation hubs, interregional innovation investments, the ERA hubs. As you said, mentioned, Patrick, it's quite a complex landscape. So for us, um, I think what we are keen to do is can we just is focus a little bit more on how we can see almost the creation of a framework through these kind of discussions and a, and a coordinated approach to bring these things together and maybe using the ecosystems approach as that kind of common thread through all of these developments as a key principle to guide what are you know they're very strategic conversations about our future regional innovation and industrial policy development and practice um, and evidently if we're talking about that kind of integration factor that principle should also be part of the European research area and the new pact for um, research and innovation that have both be mentioned and are under development <clears throat> so Moving on, um, what do we see, if we could go to the next slide, please, for us, the these principles um, of the innovation ecosystem. I think from the European level, as a network, we see this as a, a way of bridging the innovation gap between Europe and other parts of the world, but through connecting regional innovation ecosystems. Um, so br bringing together our own bottom-up, kind of organically developing e ecosystems connecting them to help then bridge gaps, to foster greater innovation across these um, spaces and divides so that we can be acting as a European, pan-European innovation ecosystem more effectively on a global stage. 
it's about connecting partners, but also policy drivers. And I think that is very important for us. And yes, we are, we are talking from the perspective of the practitioners from the bottom-up perspective. But when we're looking upwards from the bottom, we see the need for that po the policy drivers to be connected as well, because otherwise those act as potential obstacles and challenges to our work on um, ecosystem integration. So that needs to be across innovation, regional, industrial, social, and sectoral policies. Because within an ecosystem, actors who would identify themselves in those places and would have responsibilities and obligations to deliver under those different policies will be working together in their innovation ecosystem. And the focus for us is really about promoting more structured, longer term, strategic innovative partnerships. So this is more than, a, and a, these are more than projects. They are, they are ecosystems. And I think we should sometimes think about what that word means. It has this idea of something organic and essentially, I think inherently place-based and around the community and the assets that the community has and would like to develop, the experience they already have acquired, the knowledge that they have and would like to develop. And I think that is really important to think about how we you, we can support those partnerships within a region and between regions um, to develop their relationships with key, key stakeholders so that they can be sharing knowledge but also developing new products and services and access to value chains. So it has a really effect on the whole economy and the wider and is building those wider community benefits which is really important in the example we use from Scotland. I think another thing that to mention that's relevant I think also for understanding this complexity is the fact that ecosystems can adapt and again that, that they organically they're in a process of evolution nearly all the time. So we've already seen in our work in Erin, as Erin members, and particularly in Scotland, this idea of we've moved from seeing it as something that we're bringing together academic, public and private actors to bringing in that wider um, community actors and kind of societal actors. And more recently, almost seeing our natural environment as a part of our ecosystem, as a partner in that as well, and really understanding the importance of that perspective as well. So with... Um, and I think this is really important to the thinking of how we take this forward, that even an innovation ecosystem will have actors in it that are beyond what we would see as perhaps um, the usual suspects in an innovation and research and innovation conversation at the European level. So I think that's the thing is the ecosystems will evolve at pace and with a focus that fits the needs and opportunities in that area. And this, again, is something I think to bear in mind if we're taking an ecosystems approach that when we look down from the top, we might be looking for things to fit into shape that won't necessarily help the organic development of the ecosystem. So we need to learn, think of the ecosystem first and then how to have a common framework for how we extract the learning and examples from the ecosystems to extrapolate to a European or, or kind of global level, I think. Um, so moving on, just to give, as I said, we were asked to talk about some examples. Um, when we were thinking about this at an Erin level, we realised that there's many different um, levels actually at which our, our members' ecosystems um, operate. So to give an example from Scotland, if we go to the next side, I could talk to you about Scotland's r &I ecosystem because we think in this way when we're supporting innovation development and economic development in Scotland. We have a very broad ecosystem. We have a long history of kind of having planned support for our innovation and a place-based kind of regional uh, approach. Our approach to smart specialisation, which has also obviously been mentioned by previous speakers, reflects that and it reflects how we deliver our wider economic development. It's focused on our commitment to delivering a well-being economy first and foremost and bringing together all actors that have a part in that um, story when we support economic development, innovation and so on. It's a cross-agency collaboration model. Um, so there is no one or agency or organisation that is responsible for research and innovation or for delivering benefits from our ecosystem. It is seen as something that requires us all organisations with different responsibilities to act together. Um, and within that, we our focus is not just on growing R&I, it's about how we support that e innovation ecosystem to then support our broader objectives in terms of making every place in Scotland a place where there are opportunities about growing jobs and about accelerating our journey towards being a net zero country and economy. Um, and I think another thing, if we look at the Scottish level, is this focus on global challenges and respond, responding to global ch challenges responsibly with a values-based approach. But our response, recognising that how we maximise our local or regional assets for our communities should be part of a conversation that's about the impacts of what we do locally 
in, ter in terms of responding to broader global challenges. And I think that's a theme and a strand that's very common through all of our work and with Erin members, that while we're focused on the local, there is an awareness at the local level of the, those kind of broader global challenges and our responsibility to help find solutions for more than just our, our communities, but that broader international community. I think a really good example of what this means in practice is, as, as um, you mentioned, Patrick, the Orkney example. Now, you might wonder if we're talking about research and innovation, where I would be thinking of a, a northern group of islands north of the coast of mainland Scotland with a population of only 21,000 people. Um, I suppose what you could say is, um, as Mark Eden calls you, say it's a small place with big potential. Another way of looking at it is also is if things can work here, they can pretty much work anywhere. Um, and that's something that, that our colleagues in Orkney are really um, keen to share, that they've gone through this journey of trying to focus on a particular issue. Here it was on the, the in terms of the energy system, of bringing in what would seem like the critical actors for that, of realising that that had to be broadened out to a conversation with the wider community that will be impacted on any investments and developments. And again, that aspect that I mentioned before about realising the main assets are in our national environment here in the renewable energy sector. But I think this is more and more the case in, in many areas of innovation development. And how do we, we see the, our envi environment and natural assets as a partner rather than just a resource to be used? Um, so it's a whole system approach. It's a strong focus on, on R&I. Um, but I think the real mission for the, the partners in Orkney were really about quite practical things. They were about reducing time and cost and risk <coughs> associated with the, the, the developments that they were doing in the energy sector. They were also about really maximising the use of local assets. And again, not just the, the physical assets and the facilities, but also the unprecedented experience in the area because of its natural geography, because of having the world's second largest natural harbour, because of having the oil industry, because of diversifying into uh, renewables and the knowledge they had from that, but recognising the focus was to try and build a globally successful industry in this remote place from those assets. Um, but, again, but again, those drivers for this were the global issues of climate change, wider economic development and energy security. What I think is a really interesting lesson from the partners in from the economic development agencies, the local authorities, university campus, private companies, and a lot of local community groups that have been involved in these developments. Um, you know, if you're in a place like Orkney, you can't get away with much without having all the residents have, wanting to get involved in that view. In a small community, things don't go unnoticed. So it's really been a community development. And what they've learned from the ecosystem approach is, while this was developed to focus on the energy system, they now have the relationships, the stakeholder relationships, the exchange of knowledge and ideas and information that they can start to recognise where there are gaps in the other services and support that they deliver in other parts of the, the wider ecosystem and can address them more effectively using these relationships and using the ecosystem approach. And I think that's where what is now the focus of a lot of the conversations within the partners is not just their energy system development projects, but also the wider community benefit that they can deliver through the ecosystem approach. And I think this is, is the really for us the kind of critical part of what we need to remember about the ecosystem approach can deliver more than just the, the projects that it spawns. It can deliver that as an adaptable, kind of very responsive systems approach to whatever comes next. Um, so going to the last slide, I suppose uh, to sum that up, I think our view from the Erin side is that a renew, renewed ERA should provide a framework for this place-based and regional research and innovation ecosystem thinking and approach to recognise that that added value that can we can have from increasing the interconnectivity between ecosystems who are based on regional and local needs and opportunities. But also that point that's been mentioned by others by bringing together those wider RNI policy priorities <clears throat> policies and funding instruments across government levels, whether they're European, national, regional or local. Um, so really for us, the concept should be more than just an instrument. It should be more than a programme. And we're keen to work together to make this thinking an integral part of the ERA. Sarah.
Thank you very much. And it's really great not only to have your uh, particular perspective, but also this very encouraging uh, example from Orkney of how local actors in a relatively small community uh, can come together. Uh, but I, I also am very happy that in your final slide you, you mentioned the, uh, this new concept of the uh, ERA hubs, which, as I said in my introduction, is a key uh, sort of new feature of uh, our communication. And I'm hoping that uh, Christophe, who's been working uh, hard with us on the developing this uh, concept will be able to share with us uh, his perspective of how it can as a concept add value beyond the existing wide array of coordination mechanisms and policies that uh, uh, that Fernando presented earlier and how can we work together really to exploit this new concept of um, uh, of uh, error hubs in order to bring together all of the relevant actors uh, around a common agenda and then use it as a platform for inter regional cooperation and engagement with the European level. So, uh, Christoph, uh, thank you for waiting and over to you. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. And I'm very pleased to give a compliment to uh, uh, our president's uh, speech, which gave a very complete overview of uh, our positions. Uh, thanks to Commissioner Gabriel, there is a real new path, a uh, new policy path, new, new mindset, perhaps, uh, for uh, the Commission vision of place-based approach and full uh, recognition of uh, regional and local ecosystems of innovation. And perhaps first important element, at some time we talk about European innovation ecosystem. It's one thing. But when we are talking about regional and local ecosystems of innovation, it's a second thing. And the, ne the network of regional and local ecosystems give birth to uh, the innovation ecosystem at European level. But it's very concrete and different uh, things. Uh, perhaps first element before coming concretely to ERA Hubs, uh, I am a, a member of uh, ERA Forum uh, uh, Working Group, and we have to achieve uh, implementation of uh, ERA. And there is still some very important elements uh, which must uh, find a new answers if we want, in a uh, second step, uh, give birth to uh, ERA hubs. Uh, first one, the pact for research and innovation. And we must have clear mention of place-based approach and regional ecosystems in the pact. Second element, ERA governance. ERA governance must be very open to stakeholders, not only local and regional authorities, but all kinds of stakeholders. ERA governance can be a tool just for member states and uh, specialists of research and innovation, universities, uh, academic institutions. We must have society. We must have all kinds of factors in ERA governance. Third element, if you want to tackle uh, region, um, innovation divide, we need a regional annual report about uh, ERA, um, ERA implementation. And then we need ERA hubs. So what could be ERA hubs? <laughs> it's a very important point, because do we need uh, just a new set of hubs as digital hubs? No, there's nothing bad with digital hubs, but ERA hubs, hubs must be something specific. Do we need hubs of hubs? No. The uh, landscape is uh, very complex uh, and we need something uh, new with new approach and uh, uh, new um, outputs. Do we need just a, a, a service platform or a, a tool for interconnection? It is useful, but it can be uh, the, uh, the, the nature of uh, ERA hubs. And do we need just a label? to recognize uh, regional ecosystems. Yes, it's absolutely necessary. And uh, we think we could have in Europe 100 or more uh, era hubs recognized by the Commission, by European institutions as partners, partners to uh, achieve goals, to implement public policies. And perhaps this element is the most important, era hubs is a tool to develop partnership, partnership between 
uh, regional ecosystems and the Commission, and a tool to develop uh, cooperation between uh, area hubs and between uh, regions all over uh, Europe. So I, I proposed in my uh, report uh, a set of criteria uh, to define area hubs. I, I, I won't give all the elements, it would be too long, but just some keywords. The existence of a knowledge strategy and not only a research and innovation strategy. The inv involvement at local level of all stakeholders. The capacity for collective coordination, strategy definition, and shared decision making. Also, territorial impacts in all areas. Uh, the existing smart specialization and uh, the existing involvement in thematic interregional or European smart specialization networks and a background of involvement in European research training and mobility programs. So what we want to define is not only um, uh, uh, a recognition of regional ecosystems, um, but the quality of regional ecosystems, their capacity to uh, manage uh, strategic uh, policy making, uh, their capacity to be partners uh, uh, with all uh, of actors at uh, European level. And what we think is really that area hubs can be an opportunity to combine in a coherent way the, 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 the answer to local needs for uh, in innovation to tackle societal challenges, uh, climate change, and then the capacity uh, to, to, to combine that with smart specialization and with contribution to European excellence and capacity to set uh, projects uh, in uh, Horizon Europe. It's this overview, this complete approach of capacity of local and regional actors to be actors and partners at European level, which is the more important for us. So what we ask for, what we advocate for, is not only recognition, it's partnership, it's not only label, it's cooperation with a European uh, Commission and institution and different set of public policies. And my last words would be to, to say that we hope this uh, CAP event uh, can be the starting point of an open process to design era hubs. Yes, there is a study uh, which is uh, in process on the Commission side. But we don't want a process within three months or six months, a proposals on the table, and then, yes, discussion, but we know when there is a proposal on the table, it's very difficult to change anything. We would like to have a real design thinking process with a real concrete stakeholders involvement, commitment in the design of era hubs. And all together, I think we, want, we can invent something new, something concrete, and something very useful for our common goals. Thank you. Well, Christoph, uh, thank you very much indeed. And thank you also for the thoughtful work that you've done with the Committee of the Regions to help us uh, develop this concept and for your very uh, operational uh, recommendations. Um, we now have about 10 minutes left for questions. And for those of you who are watching, um, you can ask questions in the chat function. Um, and I hope you won't hesitate in asking questions now that we've got such a, uh, a distinguished audio, uh, the panel to, to, to challenge with all of your thoughts and, and issues. Um, and I would like to kick things off uh, with a couple of questions to Manuel. I mean, I'd first like, Manuel, you to respond to Christophe's um, uh, appeal there for uh, support and partnership from the Commission, from the European institutions for the work that we hope uh, we'll see now developing on the era hubs uh, across the, the European Union and in the associated countries. And then I'd also like to come back to the issue that raised by the President in his introduction about the innovation divide. And, you know, in practical terms, given the very striking uh, the figures that he gave about the uneven distribution of our <coughs> research and innovation activities, what do you think the new era governance can do to help us overcome this innovation divide? Thank you, and, and, and thank you, Christophe, uh, uh, for your uh, for your um, words about the era hubs. Indeed, uh, I, I think 
here at the Commission, we always ask ourselves the question, what is the added value? Why should we develop a new idea called Era Hubs? Uh, do we need new hubs? Uh, and you were asking these questions yourself, Christophe. Um, and to me, the, uh, uh, the reply to this question, or the beginnings of the re reply to this question, and without prejudice, of course, of the study that's ongoing and about all the different uh, discussions that we will have, is, I think, what the, the added value is of this future initiative and the way that we conceived it when we mentioned it in the era communication was about interconnecting. This was the way that we wanted to uh, see uh, uh, this new initiative, not creating new hubs. And maybe the name is a little bit misleading when we say era hubs. That's why we, we always try to say the era hubs initiative. It was really about interconnecting. And I think uh, um, uh, Sarah's uh, example with the Orkney Islands was, was quite, uh, quite eloquent in the sense that you, you, we saw that uh, lovely picture of the Orkney Islands and, and it's beautiful and it's remote. And we could be speaking about the Azores Islands in Portugal or uh, uh, an island in Greece. And, and when we think about all the effort that goes into creating an ecosystem, then of course we need to ask ourselves, well, how do we interconnect this ecosystem to uh, other ecosystems and to other existing hubs? And so to me, this is the beginning of, uh, of a reply to your question, Patrick, about what is the added value of this initiative in terms of overcoming uh, the innovation divide? What th could this be in the future? And I think it's along these lines that we have to, to think about. On, on the governance specifically, what can the future era governance do to address the uh, innovation divide? Now, we have many initiatives. We have some that already exist. We have others that we are thinking about. For example, uh, in the era communication, we also have the, the, uh, the era for you initiative, uh, which we will develop, which is about academia business uh, mobility. Now, all of these different ideas, I think, require something, which is coherence. And I think this is what the, era, the future era governance can provide and should provide to all of these different initiatives. And also including the, the uh, uh, current initiatives and future initiatives and actions that we will have under the uh, framework program, under the widening part of the framework program with, a, uh, with new actions and of course with a, a, a much reinforced uh, budget. Now, coherence to me here is the key word and one of the uh, clues that the uh, era communication provides us is about having, for example, a dedicated work stream in the future era forum for transition in its, uh, uh, in its uh, permanent mode or in, in, in its final mode, and not so much now in, it, in its experimental mode, but having a dedicated work stream in the era forum for transition precisely to address these issues and to bring coherence to the different initiatives. So I think this could be a clue uh, to uh, how the future governance could look like and what the added value could be. Great, thanks, Manuel. Um, Sarah, can I come back to you? And I, I know your voice is, uh, uh, but you were very clear before, and as someone myself born in Scotland, I think it's very interesting to have this uh, uh, particular perspective at this time. But, but I mean, do, does what uh, uh, Manuel says uh, resonate with you? I mean, his, uh, his rather sort of theoretical perspective on, you know, what things would look like in an ideal world as, uh, you know, the, the vision of this, uh, uh, you know, usual 100-page document for the Commission is, is rolled out with our sort of, um, you know, robust uh, institutional determination. I mean, is this something that is going to resonate with your members across the network? Um, and, and if so, um, you know, what are the bits of it that you think beyond what you said maybe in your introduction, which was, I think, very clear, uh, that we should particularly be, be looking out for? Thanks, Patrick. I feel like, as one Scot said there, Patrick's encouraging me to get myself into trouble with my institutional colleagues by being too practical. But... Um, do 100-page documents with lots of complex um, rules resonate with our members across Europe? No. I, I will answer that one directly. However, does a conversation like this about the recognition of that innovation can happen in places that are not necessarily the centre of all other types of, types of r &I excellence, does a conversation about the benefits of exploring where there's underutilised potential in places you don't necessarily expect, who don't already have 
the names and the institutions that would gain them access to additional funding through traditional RI investment um, approaches. Yes, those those part this conversation definitely interests all of our members and they're actively engaged in it. It's why we and Erin are talking about ecosystems approach. Do we sometimes have to change the language to get people interested? Absolutely. And I think this is something through all of the existence of the Erin network. One of the reasons why we, the Brussels-based representatives, want to interact so closely with our institutional colleagues is to try to help be translators of the message, to bring to make it understandable that there are common interests at this kind of quite complex policy level with what people are trying to grapple with in terms of finding better solutions to improve our communities, our economic development and our um, research and innovation potential. I think what we need to do is have those kinds of common threads that say this is a place that the conversation can happen. This is a place where we can bring in the experience and the expertise and the knowledge to try and build something that is as clear and as simple as possible within this complex landscape and this is where we we as a network can also try and help i mean the specific issue of the yep. the innovation divide that's something that we have developing um for our 20th anniversary year of erin a special working group at looking at where is the in- underutilized potential within our membership and how can we find solutions to almost bring together our ecosystems as a membership to help look for o- opportunities and then that practical experience is something we can bring back into these more governance-based conversations. But the idea of a working group in the context of the era forum for transition is definitely a good place to start. Great, thanks, Sarah. And we have a question to, to you, Fernando, um, about your example of the batteries, um, the batteries alliance. Um, I mean, a very, very striking example of many different actors coming together. Um, but I mean, in terms of individual regions or cities engaging with the uh, batteries alliance, can you just, you know, talk to us a little bit about how that that's working in practice? I mean, is it a really good example of, of regional engagement, or is it just a, another European um, level initiative supporting an important industry? sector well this is a good question i think we we would need to test uh, how much is implemented in the ground but uh, in terms of engagement uh, well this has has been framed by by the existing um, smart specialization thematic platform so there is a thematic platform on industrial modernization where uh, regions uh, come together and set uh, common uh, research goals and, and, and innovation goals uh, and trying to cover, in this case of the battery uh, interregional partnerships, they, they, they try to cover the whole uh, value chain. So this is a good example, again, of, of, okay. of how these partnerships uh, can be established in, in the future. I, okay. I think it, I, I have been very, uh, very interested by, by the intervention from um, from uh, Christophe. Uh, I think this idea of making ERA hubs uh, or, or having as main objective the promotion of partnerships between ERA hubs, I think it is very important and, and, and very interesting. Also, yeah. in order to promote local experimentation, I think we, yeah. we, we should take advantage of the diversity of Europe in order to experiment uh, new solutions and, and scale up new solutions. Thanks very much, Fernando. And I want to give the last word indeed to Christophe uh, uh, to give us one final sort of inspirational message of why. Why should our regions and cities engage in the era hubs in the new uh, era governance? Thank you. And perhaps to answer to, to Manuel, perhaps I would say empowerment. We, uh, era hubs, regional ecosystem, needs support from European Commission to uh, strengthen uh, their uh, core strategic coordination, opening to European policies uh, task. Uh, second element, before interconnection, connection. Connection with European policies, capacity to set bottom-up projects and make them recognized, for example, in Horizon Europe. And then, yes, interconnection, in coherence with uh, smart specialization, uh, uh, and to develop common answers at European level, joining forces from different regions and different regional ecosystems. So, yes, empowerment, connection, and interconnection. Thank you.
Great. Thank you very much, uh, Christophe, and uh, thank you to everyone. Thank you for everyone who's been watching this, uh, I think, very stimulating discussion. Uh, we've heard many different dimensions of how we can work together uh, at a European, local, national, regional level uh, to make a real success of the opportunities presented by the European research area uh, for our green digital transitions as we emerge from the COVID crisis. And I think we've had some extremely uh, thought-provoking framing remarks from our commissioner. Um, in particular, emphasizing the place-based uh, dimension of the work that we're trying to do through the European Research Area, the very comprehensive political overview uh, from the, the President of the Committee of the Regions, and then some really inspiring and thought-provoking interventions from our four panelists. So I'd like to thank uh, Manuel, uh, uh, Fernando, uh, Sarah and uh, Christophe for your uh, interventions uh, today. Uh, and I think we're all looking forward to uh, picking up the challenge that Christophe has presented to us of developing in particular this uh, concept of error hubs with the full commitment uh, and engagement not only of I'm sure a very energetic response from regional authorities across the European Union but I can assure you uh, the strong and unwavering support of the European Commission and the other European institutions. We need to make this work. So thank you all very much and have a great day.